Hello, Mike. Welcome to Metal Cows in Chicago. How are you? Fantastic. How are you? I'm great. And in fact, Kill the Lights have caught me off, gu off guard. Because I will start with uh, my full disclosure. I'm an old school metalhead. <laughs> and yeah. if great. So if you had asked me, let's say 20 years ago, if I like metalcore, I would say, no, man, that's not for me. I'm thrust, metal, that's all. But now, as I grew up, as I grown older, I mean, I appreciate music. And even though Kill the Lights, this album sounds thrashier. As, the, as compared to the previous, it still comes with a label metalcore. So sorry for the long introduction, but I thought that <laughs> it's worth to clear <laughs> the water for you. So do you agree with me? This album is um, heavier than the first one? I don't know. I, the, the first one was heavy, but this one is darker and heavy, if you know what I mean. It's oh, yes. lyrically... It's a lot darker than the first one. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Um, I don't know. Well, maybe in my mind, uh, since you have so many riffs there, um, you have now a second singer in the band, a, sec uh, a growler now. Uh, you have <laughs> Jason joining the band. So that's, to my mind, makes the album, uh, maybe I should say thrashier. How about that? Yes, definitely heavier with the additional, uh, with the, the addition of Jay's vocals because his voice is pretty, um, pretty intense sometimes. So, did he, as he, when he joined the band, the songwriting, the your style, how you, uh, how the band writes songs changed? Yeah, I mean, the first album was written with just myself, Jordan, and James, really. Mm -hmm. So, it was the three people on the first album. This album was written with the full five members. So, that brought every, everyone into, like Travis wrote um, loads of riffs for this album with his Lamb of God influences and stuff like that. And we just chucked them all in. Yeah, and the result is awesome. Um, so if you were to compare how you created, how the band worked on the singer and death melodies, what would be the first, uh, the most um, stand-up uh, differences between those two cycles? Uh, the cinema was mainly done via emails and file sharing. Mm -hmm. Um, death melody's part of it was, but mainly most of it was written together in a room. Okay, because you have the band is spread between, split between the Atlantic, right? With the Atlantic in the yeah. in the in the middle. So uh, how did that work out? Uh, did you have to go to the US or the guys from the US came to the UK in Wales? Um, yeah, we just flew over really. Um, <clears throat> because I, I think music, creating music together is a lot better. You get more energy when you're together. Mm -hmm. Rather than like, we had to write some songs apart, obviously, like because of COVID and stuff and restrictions. So a couple of songs like Man Without a Face was written separately but um, mostly it was just us in a room we had we have to get on a plane and we have to travel to see each other because if we don't i think the music will suffer and we can't have that so uh how how long did they uh, this process took the the songwriting process and then the recording <clears throat> it took a while that's why we haven't really toured because obviously we released the album in covid and then covid happened so we saw that as an opportunity. Obviously, there's not going to be any touring, so we just crack on writing the album. And then we thought, well, we may as well make this album the best it can be. So we just took our time with it. And um, yeah, that was it, really. Where, where, did, you it. where did you record it? In the US? Or the, uh... I recorded the drums in Derby in Andy Sneep's studio up in, um, up in England. Mm -hmm. And I recorded them two years ago. Two years ago? Yeah. <laughs> why and why did you were you sitting on this so long just because of the restrictions what what's ha what happened <laughs> yeah we were just make, making sure everything was in its right place okay so basically you are a perfectionist no i'm joking right <laughs> well, no we just didn't want to yeah we, did, we didn't want to rush things so is it wrong to say that in the meantime uh you have started working on more songs 
Yep, we're three songs or four, four songs into our next album already. Oh boy. Yeah, so we we always like to be ahead of ourselves, really, because we know if we start touring this album, because we didn't get a chance to tour the first album, we know we won't have much time to write the next album. So if we get ahead of ourselves now, then we're we're in a good we're in a good place. For the production and mixing, uh, you worked with Chris Clancy and Colin Richardson, correct? Correct. So uh, both of these happened in the UK. Yes, they uh, they both did the first album. We loved the way they worked together, and I this is my sixth album with Colin. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's Colin Richardson. He's he's got to be the, like the best metal producer on the planet. So, yeah. Did you, you try? Work- something different uh, as compared to the production uh, with a singer? Um, not really, no. I mean, we just all had the songs laid out and we did a little bit of pre-production with Chris Clancy and then we just went in and bashed it out. Did uh, the band, uh, I, I imagine as you talked about bringing the band together, that when you were recording at least parts of the album, you were in the same room almost or in the same yeah. room. <laughs> when I was recording the drums, the boys flew over, and then once the drums were done, they all flew uh, home and recorded their guitar parts and stuff in their own cities. So, what about the cover artwork of the album? Why did you choose to go uh, with a symbol, the band's logo, and the album title? Um, we just wanted it to look as classy as possible, really, and the colours come from a can of Guinness. We were drinking Guinness. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and we were like, ah, oh, look at those colors. Like, black and There gold. you go. There you go. <laughs> and we were like, and then we just started this discussing what it should be. And we were like, oh, what if it look, you know, what if it resembled a book, just a black and gold book? And we just thought that was a really nice, simple, classy idea. And we just stuck with it. That's the reason why one of the vinyl editions comes in golden, right? You can't try to uh, capture the same coloring. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. okay. Uh, what about the title? Why did you choose Death Melodies? Um, well, Death Melodies came about because, first of all, I was reading James's lyrics and they were all about death, anxiety, dying, depression. And then there was um, one of the songs was called um in this demo form was called Death Melodies. And I said, well, why don't we call the album Death Melodies? Because it's such a great name. And then all the boys agreed. But I think it cap um captures the album perfectly because it's about death and it's really melodic as well. So you said a demo of the song. So what song is uh is that? I think it was let me think. I'm trying to guess, but... Wasting Away. I think it was Wasting, wasting away. away. I, I would yeah. have gone with Die Alone or Suicidal, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but I failed. I failed miserably. Um, you have released some uh, uh, video clips or music videos. So first of all, were you involved in the concept or in the making of the video clips? Yeah, definitely. We have a, like a Zoom meeting like we're having now with the um, video directors. Zeb and he give us his ideas and I give him my ideas and then we just I just to be honest, I just give him an idea and if he says yeah we can do it, I'm like cool. But if he said I was like, let's burn it, buy a house and burn it down, he was like, you know, it's too expensive. So I was like, okay. <laughs> let's let's not do that. <laughs> well, yeah, so yeah, we definitely have meetings and stuff, but yeah. I wanted to ask you, and I may sound a little bit geeky, but in here you scream. Uh, the concepts remind me. I don't. I'm not sure if you know the TV series of uh, Dexter. So that has. It has. Uh, there is. Is there any connection between, <laughs> on the inspiration of the video? I mean, yeah, there is. I mean, that's all Zeb. That was all Zeb's idea. He was. He was like, look, we'll we'll do a, the video like Dexter style, and we were like, yeah, cool, <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So that was all Zeb. Okay, and you said that um, uh, James wrote the lyrics. Yeah, I was thinking since Jason is also singing, uh, uh, if he had anything to do with uh, choosing the words, at least. Oh yeah, I'm sure um, Jay would help James out when he was stuck, and you know, put his input in. But mainly, I think is um, James writes most of the lyrics, and then Jay will help 
about. And you said uh, this album talks about deals with all these personal struggles that everybody is uh, having. So um, is this every is this given uh, under a positive light, uh, like deal with it and you will win? Or how do you understand the lyrics, uh, James Rowe? I mean, yeah, um, I think he means them in a positive way. He writes them to help other people, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. He doesn't. He doesn't write them to put people on on the wrong path. He's tr he definitely, yeah. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. I think that's definitely his message because everyone goes through it and everyone has gone through it and mm -hmm. come out the other. So it's definitely a positive message. And I think after the uh, the pandemic, uh, everything that we were dealing with has become even stronger. Instead of making it uh, weaker, it has become stronger for whatever the reason. Um, mm -hmm. Sleep with the Devil, the, the music video. At the end, you burn a book that has the album cover. That not, that's not the light at the end of the tunnel, man. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking, of course. Uh, but how, how, who had that idea? Uh, that was my idea because I've always wanted to put, oh, well, I've always loved it when I see the album cover in a video. Mm -hmm. um, so I... I I got to do with this one. I was like, because we had um, books made of the album cover for to make the album cover. So we had the books made. And then I was like, I got these spare books. Can we put one in the video and burn it? And, I let, and they were like, are you sure? And I was like, yeah, just burn it. So that's that's why it's in there. You, you wanted, uh, the band wanted to burn something. You started with a house, but then, okay, that makes more sense, right? <laughs> yeah, it's got to be burned up. Yeah, it's got to be fire. <laughs> so I, I'm not very fun uh, talking about the past. However, what would you say are the biggest difference between being in a band like Bullet for My Valentine and Kill the Lights? I suspect that you have more degrees of freedom, right? I'm um, less pressure. Um, more fun. It was fun in the early days of Bullet. Um, so it's fun now. Um, yeah, there's no... Bullet just turned into this massive machine, mm -hmm. you know, and it was and it's just like, oh, okay, you got it got a bit. Do an album, do a tour. Once you've toured that album for twelve months, you write another um, write another album, tour, write another album, tour. It was just, you know, same venues. There was no, it got so big so quick. There was no growth anymore. It was just kind of going the wrong way, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I I can only imagine. Yeah. Yeah. So with Kill the Lights, how can you safeguard yourself from something like that happening again to you? Um, or to the band? I don't know. <laughs> I, that's a good question. Um, talk to each other more. Mm -hmm. And just communicate better. <laughs> you know what? I think that is part of growing up because bands basically are uh, families. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you grow apart. Uh, well, with real families, you cannot cut uh, communication, but with bands, you, you can say, okay, I will stop being part of this band and then do something uh, on my own and then have a better setup for you. I think that's what you have guys achieved in Kill the Lights. Yeah, I mean, right now everything's good and everyone's loving each other, but we'll... We'll see what uh, <laughs> two years <of> touring does. <laughs> uh, before talking about the tour, uh, will you um, have you filmed another music video before the release, the album release date? Uh, no, Sleep the Devil was the last video, oh. but there, there's going to be more like I don't know, like lyric videos or something come in. Okay, okay. Touring. Uh, you have a European tour, April nineteenth to May tenth. Uh, what's the rest of the year looks like for Kill the Lights? Uh, we're going to wrap the, that tour and then all eyes are set on America, really. Hmm. Um, we've been inundated with everyone just saying, why aren't you coming to the States? And we're just picking the right time at the moment to actually come because the label are American, 80% of the band are American, so... Once this tour is done, we're going to shift over there, hopefully.
Uh, do you know if that will be headlining shows or some part of a, another package? Um, nothing yet, but I'm I'm sure to be sensible about it would be if we could get an opening slot on a tour somewhere. Okay, okay. Uh, well, it depends how <laughs> how uh, what part of the US you want to tour. If you want to go all around, then I'm yeah. I don't know, man. You know better than me. Anyhow, um, have you chosen the songs to use on this tour, on the upcoming uh, tours? Yes. Full stop. Full stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, full stop. Just tell, tell me this. Wasting Away, Man Without a Face, Suicidal, will be. Will those be included? No. Next one. <laughs> Come on. You're joking. You're pulling my chain. Yanking my chain, man. <laughs> I know, because... um. They're all our favorite songs too, but we have to squeeze in songs of the sinner plus the singles we released. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I know. But they will, they will. I mean, I rehearse them every day just in case they get to go in the set. Uh, so none of those? You're serious? Okay, okay, oh, man. okay. Um, those were my questions, Michael. If you have anything else that you would like to share, um, although I will throw a bonus one. Only because you said you have us demos for three songs. Do you think, do you see the band releasing the third album sooner? Um, hopefully, we, yeah, this one will be more smooth to tour, tour this one and obviously try and get this wrapped up. Yeah, I don't think it'll be another four year wait. Because I'm it, thinking that the band being together, playing shows, it may be, it, it will be tiring. But it can be it can uh, inspire you guys. Oh yeah, I mean, as, as soon as we get touring together, as soon as we're in a room together, we'll start writing again. It's just it, we've got so much time to kill on tour, so we'll just start writing. Awesome! Thank you very much for your time. Uh, have safe touring, and see you in the states. Perfect. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thanks.